welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called, not enough. When I was 23, I worked at a fast food restaurant chain, just off a busy freeway slash highway interchange, so we were constantly busy. I was one of the people working the line, prepping and wrapping burgers, and we had these onions that came in a bag. They were freeze dried. They always tasted a little strange to me, but customers seemed to like them a lot. While working an incredibly busy Friday afternoon shift, we had a gentleman come in through the drive-thru. He made his order, a few burgers and fries, but on one of the burgers he wanted extra of those onions. No big deal, just add the onions, wrap up the burger, send it to the runner and out the window. The gentleman took his order, pulled up a little way past the drive through window and checked his food. At the time, those of us on the line had no clue yet that he did this. He then pulled back around in our drive through line. He waited through a line of 6 cars and when he finally got back to the order box, he told the person on the speaker that we didn't make his extra onion order with enough onions. Ok, again, no big deal, as we usually put a small pinch as per company procedure on the burgers generally. So when they say extra, it's just another small pinch. So he gives us back the burger and we remake it. This time with a couple of generous pinches, wrap up the burger, give it to the runner, into our bag and out the window. He pulls forward as we are busy and wins and repeat. Well, he comes around again and this time he was being a jerk and started yelling at us that we were incompetent and didn't know how to do our jobs. I had just pulled a fresh ready badge out of the fridge. I stuck my hand into the bottom of the container and pulled out a pound and a half of these rehydrated onions. I took a look at my 17 year old manager who nodded his head. I piled it on top of his burger, which made it 3 times the normal size, wrapped it up and sent it to the runner who backed it and gave it to the customer. This time all of us from the line piled up in the drive thru to wait and see what would happen. As we are watching the back of his car, all we see is him looking down, checking his head and driving off, so we figured that was it. Until the next shift, when we came in to questions from our store manager about a complaint the customer had made about unacceptable food practices and indigent service. We explained our side of the story, with our manager present. She laughed and then said she had to give us a verbal warning for not following company procedure, which we didn't mind and went about our day. The next story is called Retail Challenges. Back in college I worked for a retail store that is a national brand, but the particular location I worked at was very small. Often there would just be two employees working. For those of you that haven't worked retail before, there are different tasks that you do as part of the job, depending on what you are scheduled for. For example, you can work on the sales floor helping customers. You can be scheduled at the register, in the fitting rooms or you can be in the stock room, which was usually done early morning or late at night. It requires a bit of manual work. Opening boxes, breaking them down, taking out the trash, organizing the clothes that are in the back room, etc. Which I never minded doing. But you can get pretty dirty doing it. One day I came into work midday and it was just me and a supervisor, Sheila. Sheila was at the register, ringing up customers as the other employee was leaving. I go to the back room, put away my stuff and clock in. I notice a ton of boxes in the bag from inventory shipment that didn't get processed in the morning. Well, not my problem, I'll be on the sales floor. I come out to the sales floor to check in with Sheila for sales goals etc. After she gives me all that info, she tells me that I need to be in the bag to process the shipment because they didn't get it done in the morning. I tell her that I'm not scheduled for it and I'm also not dressed for it. I'm wearing a button down shirt, dress pants and dress shoes. And she tells me that neither is she. She's wearing a dress and that's where she assigned me and that's what I needed to work on. I buy a cheap shirt that was on sale for maybe 3 dollars or so and head to the back. There I look for the employee handbook and read through the part of what supervisors can and cannot do. There's a section in there that says something along the lines of the active manager cannot be at the register. And because it's only Sheila and myself in the store and I am in the back, she would have to be at the register. So I call the phone at the register and she answers. I tell her that I was reading through the employee handbook and found the section and I read the entire paragraph saying that active managers can't be at the register. She doesn't say anything and simply hangs up. I walk back to the front of the store, return the cheap t-shirt I bought and get behind the register without saying anything. She last stomps off to the back to process shipment in her pretty dress. 
The third story is called I never do anything right. I used to work for a private company that was owned by a wealthy woman who could afford to have a dim-ridded, stubborn and mean daughter run one of the departments. It didn't go well, but it was a small department and the mother was more interested in keeping her daughter happy than making a profit. Thankfully, the daughter, M, usually only worked a few hours each morning to help me out and then she would leave. I'm all for inclusion and encouraging people to learn new things. But M was not fit for management and definitely didn't have the faculties for accounting. She would help me and I would wait for her to leave so I could fix it. Writing legible notes, sending notices, giving customers change and receipts, posting past due notices, etc. This went on for three years until I found a better job and gave two weeks notice. M was livid. She felt like it was betrayal. M started staying all day to do any bookkeeping. She started talking to co-workers and customers alike, telling them I don't know how to do my job, I do everything wrong and it's all my fault we were in a better department. She would do this in front of my face too, pulling someone aside to talk in stage whispers. I can't do anything right, if you say so. I stop doing things my way and only do what you explicitly ask. I won't take the fullest usage from a payment, but instead give change like they are buying one unit. I won't transcribe her atrocious handwriting. I won't give past due notices. I won't maintain the customer balance spreadsheets. By the end of my last two weeks, they had switched from using Excel to using a spiral notebook to lock customer payments. They also gave away the laptop with the old notes and customer contact sheet and forgave any outstanding balances because M insisted my notes were wrong, meaning they lost a couple of thousand dollars and clients would have no way to contact them unless they came in person since our department didn't have a designated phone number. But remember, I never do anything right. The next story is called Power Trip. I was working as a manager for a small general store. When I started, I had another manager working nights with me. The general manager fired him for tying his shoe one night, claiming he was attempting to steal cash. I observed the audit on the store finances and saw the camera footage. All money was accounted for. The work then fell on me to operate the entire store by myself. I often ran the entire store alone. I ran the register, put out nearly a thousand crates of fried per week and maintained the floor which contained hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise at a single time. Crime in the area was rampant. Shoplifting happened on a nearly hourly basis. I was getting to the end of my rope after a tweaker broke into my office and stole my backpack. It had nearly a thousand dollars of stuff in it. It had deteriorated so bad that three cars were running into the store, loading up carts and running out. Soon after she fired the other manager, the general manager started getting really petty, finding really minor things to discipline me about. If a customer put a box of Skittles back in the wrong place, if I didn't find it, I would be disciplined. Then one day I was called into the back office to be disciplined. She was upset that I couldn't maintain the floor perfectly while simultaneously working the warehouse, the register and doing the accounting. Turns out they had finally found a potential second manager after failing to hire anyone for a significant amount of time. This gave her and the district manager a power trip. I was no longer their last manager. So they threatened to cut my hours as punishment if I was unable to do hundreds of boxes worth of fright, run the register, prep the warehouse for tomorrow's delivery fix the entire store and do the accounting within the 8 hours I was scheduled. No overtime permitted. I went back to the warehouse to think over my options. I realized this new manager that they had hired wasn't even trained yet and had yet to demonstrate that he was even capable of performing the task. So I walked back into the office, handed the general manager my keys, said, let me cut those hours for you and walked out. I called the guy I used to close with and he told me how he now works for a pharmacy. He got me a job there in accounting within the week and I nearly tripled my income. The general managers were on salary, so with me leaving, the general manager would have had to work non-stop for 14 hours, 7 days a week, for no overtime. This was a common thing the company would do because staffing was such an issue, especially these days. I haven't been back, but my suspicion is this new manager they had found probably didn't last more than a few weeks. The last story is called Post all rules. I'm a teacher. Early in my career, I worked for a principal we were called Bob. One day, a student got a little bored in science class. 
being a teenage boy, he decided that the third period was the appropriate time to rip out the phone and browse the hub. He quickly got caught showing an unapproved documentary to some of his classmates. The science teacher sent the student to Bob and expected he would face consequences. Unfortunately, Bob felt that the teacher was to blame. The teacher had never explicitly stated that students weren't allowed to watch stuff like that during class. It wasn't even posted on the wall. For those of you not in education, if you write something on a poster and put it on a wall, teenagers will pay attention to it. Bob informed the science teacher that they were lucky they were only getting a verbal warning. This time. We were all told to update our posted rules and explicitly tell students what they could and could not do in our classrooms. I got a stack of index cards and started listing all the rules I could think of. These range from the mundane, don't pick your nose, to the absurd, starting cults is strictly forbidden. Each one had a little wrong with it too. I wanted it to be accessible for all students. This continued for two weeks with students adding their own. I taped them to one wall until I had gone through a good two or three packs of index cards. Eventually Bob came into my room, pointed at the wall and said that I was making him look bad. I said that he had put the staff in a position of needing to anticipate any potential bad behavior before it happened or risked a write up. As a new teacher at the start of her career, I was obviously risk averse and was just trying to cover all my bases. We got another email the following week that due to fire code, we could no longer post paper rules. The phrase administrator discretion in our handbook would have to suffice as a warning, but we were still expected to verbally warn students of our expectations. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories in today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. And I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.